coffee. Coffee no! <laughs> Recorded live. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Freedom Fighters for America World Radio at www.freedomfightersforamerica.com. Coming up next, Al Cuppet doing his show. Al's a former action officer from the Joint Chiefs of Staff out of the Pentagon, now retired, and he's up next. Today is Thursday, October 24, 2013, and we welcome all listeners uh, who listen to this broadcast. I'd just like to make an announcement. We have our host on the fan tail of the ship, uh, and I know he's chomping at the bit to start the show. I just have to announce that next week, October 31st, we will not be doing a show on Thursday. Uh, We are moving to our new studio on that day. It's the only day we could, so we're going to be in a new studio, and uh, hopefully we, we are going to start kicking back into action again and hopefully get us back up and going five nights a week, so... We want to thank everybody for their indulgence uh, through our tough times that we've had in the past few months, and uh, we appreciate all the support and uh, all the prayers. So thank you very much, folks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the host of the show, Al Cuffett. Al? I have to get that lady to unmute. There it is. Al? Roger that. Here we are, folks. I uh, hear the young lady's synthesized voice saying you're unmuted, and... uh, (laughs) <laughs> I just thought of something about my family. I could have say you just run needed, but I better not say it. <laughs> uh, my family would like to have me muted all the time, but I'm not. <laughs> okay, hallelujah. Thank you, Mr. Producer. So, oh, wait, uh, thank you, sir. I, I, I have a, a guest on the line who I don't normally do this, but I know that you know who he is, and he wants to know... Uh, is E.W. Jackson going to win the Virginia election and that he lived there for years and it troubled him uh, what's going on there. So he wanted to know what your input on that was, if you feel like answering Well, well I'll, I'll address that. If we can get E.W. Jackson as the lieutenant governor, if we lose the other two, if that would happen, that's okay. Because E.W. Jackson as the lieutenant governor is only one breath away from being the governor in God's way of doing things. Uh, he, okay, set like up and he, put it, he, he sets them up and he puts them down. And uh, E.W. Jackson is a powerful, powerful man of God. And he's also a Harvard, Harvard Law graduate. He uh, he went to the, uh, I think Harvard Divinity School, but he said he didn't go along because there wasn't much divine in it, so he quit. And I don't blame him. Uh, those colleges up there were all started at Dartmouth and Brown and uh, Yale and Harvard and... Uh, Princeton, they were all divinity schools in the early 1700s and 1750s, but they've turned into be hotbeds of political unrest and leftist think tanks. So uh, this is what happens, folks. You start off, from, all things start off well. All evangelists start off well. In fact, uh, I started off well at 12 years old, and uh, no one told me that Chasing baseballs and skirts would get me in trouble. Uh, my parents never once told me I could backslide. I don't ever remember hearing a message on it at all. But I learned the hard way, and for 17 years, it was my mother's prayers that kept me on track. So uh, just remember, take heed that when you think you stand, you fall. You see all these advances that started off so great. Next thing you know, they're groveling around with perverted Bibles or perverted doctrines, and uh, I've watched it myself. I've watched these folks. I've been there years ago. I remember one evangelist, and uh, back in the late 50s and early 60s, they lost the whole thing. All right. Let's have a word of prayer before we start the program. Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus, the only begotten Son of a living God, and we ask you, Lord, to bless the program tonight. We ask you, Father, to put faith in the hearts of the believers. We would banish all fear in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb, we banish all fear which would rise its head. We ask you, Lord, tonight for Tracy and Greg, and we pray for Tracy on her endeavors coming up in a few weeks. 
We pray, uh, Lord, for Israel and Prime Minister Netanyahu. We pray for our Jewish friends, O Lord, that you might spare as many as possible from the coming oligarch. We pray for the Church of Jesus Christ, that you might spare the elect and the very elect, as many as you can, O God, from what's coming. Lord, we ask you now to bless the program, bless the listeners, bless the families up in Vermont, bless the families in New Hampshire, bless the families in Connecticut that have asked special prayer. And Lord, may we step up to the plate, Father, and do the job you've called us to do in these last days. Help us, O Lord, to do it. Help us, dear Jesus, to seek your face each morning and to walk with you each day as we try to reach those that are lost and save the church, the church of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, we ask it. Folks, when this thing came to my attention in 1985 and 86, what was happening, I realized we weren't reaching any folks for salvation to speak of. In fact, the church itself was spinning its wheels and slipping and sliding, and I realized if we didn't get the church back to the right Bible and back to the hymn book, we would see the church come apart and not be in a, a viable force. And that's exactly what's happened. It has happened to us, and sure enough, here we are. I usually read the scripture. I'm just going to quote one to you. Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, Master, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man doeth these things except God be with him. And he said, Nicodemus, you're a ruler of the Jews, and you don't know these things? You must be born again. Ye means you all, all you Jews. He was a ruler probably in the Sanhedrin. You must be born again, you and your friends, to make it to heaven. Otherwise, you're going to go to hell. I don't, don't, don't ever, nobody will ever accuse me of not saying there's a hell out there. There is. It's mentioned at least 52 times in the Bible. And these Bibles that are perverted, they got some other word in there. But uh, it's a four-letter word, and it's a real place. God didn't create it for his creation of man, but Adam and Eve sinned, and now everybody after them had a sin nature upon them. They fell from grace, and now without a Savior, without the Messianic line, without the line of Judah, L-I-O-N of Judah, Jesus, the Lord Christ of God will all perish. But thank God he sent a Savior. He sent the Jewish people to bring forth a Messiah. And he he brought it forth. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, his only sired Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, yes, your body will die one day. You get 20 pair of chromosomes, not 28. But if your soul is saved and your spirit is sanctified by the Holy Ghost, you will leave that body, the spirit will leave that body upon your death, and you will be taken to heaven, if not by the angel of the Lord, by the Lord himself. I'm going to uh, read a hymn to you here, folks. You know, the Jews, the Hebrew people, the Hebrew children came out of Egypt. The death angel passed over. They put blood upon the doorposts and lintels. They put it on the sides and on the top of the door. And the death angel passed over, and Israel was delivered. The Israelites were delivered out of the hand of Pharaoh. And there's a song out there written in, uh, when was it written? It doesn't say here. But uh, it comes from Exodus 12, 13, and it called When I See the Blood, and it refers to the Passover. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all his due. He paid all, the Lord paid all his due, okay, to save us. All who receive him need never fear, for he will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Second verse. Chiefest of sinners, Jesus can save. As he has promised, so he will do. O sinner, hear him, trust in his word. Then he will pass, will pass over you. So chiefest, 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 
I E S E S T. He speaks with sinner. Jesus can save, and he will save if you repent when you're convicted of your sin. Judgment is coming. All will be there. Who have rejected, who have refused. O oh, sinner, hasten, let Jesus in. Then God will pass, will pass over you. In the final verse, O oh, what compassion, O oh, boundless love. Jesus has power, Jesus is true. All who believe are safe from the storm. Folks, it's coming. It's coming and it's close upon us. Oh, he will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. The death angel passed over the camp of Israel in the land of Goshen, but he killed Pharaoh's firstborn son. They returned them loose finally. That's it. You know, I wanted to read you tonight. Okay, I want to read uh, 12 September. Sister Julie got this word from the Lord. There's a hard road ahead for your people, says the Lord. It's a road, I'm talking about the people of America, okay? It is a road of much grief and hardship, a road to privation, I'm sorry, to privation and want. Those who have to walk this road will suffer many hard days and hardships. It may bring much grief and sorrow. And it will bring much grief and sorrow. The ones who will have to walk this road will need my presence with them. They will need my protection, my comfort, my peace, and my consolation. They will need my guidance and direction. They will need me beside them, walking with them. Pray for the ones who do not know me and who will need me in the days ahead. Pray for them diligently. As I have told you to pray for the ones facing my great judgment. Pray for the ones who already know me, but do not know me as an ever-present friendly companion. Pray for the ones who will walk through the evil days ahead. Pray without ceasing. Call out to me for mercy for them, says the Lord. Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Now, the Lord refers to America as his monstrosity when he speaks to his sister. They will sing to me a blessing. I will not hear, says the Lord. When they call out to me to heal their land, I will close my ears to their cry. I will not regard any petition for the ones who want me to save their land, for that door is closed forever. I'm not going to save it, folks. I'm going to save the remnant, but I'm not going to save the land. The country they beg me to save no longer exists, and that's true. This is not the America I knew as a young kid. This is not the America of the 1950s. It's a different America. This country never long, never, never long exists. I can do nothing to answer their prayers. This monstrosity of the USA is on my death list, says the Lord. I have no intention of saving it for anything except the, the Assyrian and the fire. Now, the word Assyrian, the phrase the Assyrian is found exactly 13 times in the authorized version, and it's referring to the Antichrist. She is there for those days, and in the meantime, she is being raked by my judgment. Every day, and that's true. And look at Australia. Sixty fires burning in Australia. We had a, the two worst fires we've ever had in our history the last few months. I don't even know if there's still burning. The news doesn't even carry it anymore. They just run for a week, about three or four days, and it, it disappears. The thing they understand is because they have closed their ears to me, and I will do the same when they call out. Call out. Let no prayer be raised for monstrosity except I complete my judgments upon her thoroughly. Let my people call out to me for the perfecting of each judgment that I send them. Let them agree with me for the fulfillment of each play and each tear I send. For, the, for monstrosity is the object of my wrath, and my wrath will not be turned away till I have accomplished my good pleasure upon the unholy beast land I see before me. Thus saith the Lord, Amen and Amen. What's happened? We've aborted, we've aborted 50 million babies. Homosexuality runs loose on the country. Adultery runs loose. Pornography. And now we got pedophilia. And every kind of evil birth. And this nation had the truth. 
We sent the missionaries to the world with the King James Bible on the, using the British Empire's English language all over the world where they spoke English. God sent the British, the British Empire to, to anglicize the, ang- the language of the world. It's now a commerce language all over the world. Anyone, there's one-fifth of the world speaks English in the first language, and over half of them speak it as a second language. So now we face these terrible things. <clears throat> now, remember, we, now we've got a cold snap tonight. Here it's going down to 30 degrees. This is awfully cold for the end of October. Okay, we're talking like end of December, two months from now, this kind of weather. Okay? Bob warned us, remember to get winter clothes. He warned us to get the cash for six months. We'll talk about that. So folks out there in those cold states, you have to have firewood to keep warm. You have to have something to keep warm. Unless you have an awfully warm sleeping bag down about 60 below, 50 below sleep and you can sleep. And you have to have heat. You can get by here where I live with a sleeping bag in your house and not freeze it. That's if you don't have any heat. But you guys up in the cold, you got you got to prepare up there. <clears throat> I'm going to read this Valley of Decision thing that I wrote. I read it on Wednesday night, Tuesday night, and I have to read it again. Um, in fact, I'll go through it now. I was in the Valley of Decision as to whether I was going to send this thing out. And uh, I want to read it again because it's very important. I just returned to Israel, the journey of which I was shown by two servants of the Lord to make way back in January. They told me back in January. This is what is surely set to happen in a nutshell. But without much elaboration on my part in this in this email, but I will elaborate in, on this program. I'm surely going to put it all up front as I have now figured out, as I had it figured out on the 22nd and tonight the 24th. So I'm going to postulate the overall picture if I have heard it from the mouth of at least five of the Lord's servants. And postulate means that I know it's going to happen. I'm just telling you how it's going to happen. It's not that I am may expect it to happen or I think it'll happen, but this I know it's going to happen. I don't know quite when, but it looks like it's coming next month, based on what I've been told. In the mouth of two witnesses, witness, shall every word that matter be established? This will include all his related info, which comes from our own government. The theme is fixing to have a power exercise, a power grid exercise on the 12th, I'm sorry, the 13th and the 14th of November. Now, this concept of two or three witnesses was set forth in the scriptures long before any courts of Great Britain and the USA ever came into existence. I'm saying this because I got a Jewish friend, oh, that, 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 that two or three witnesses, that's for courts. I didn't. The courts didn't come. Courts were a lot millennia after Moses in the law. And in the law, the Torah and the Tanakh, the old Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament, is the concept of two or three witnesses. Then came the English common law system that picked up that, and you have to have two or three witnesses to convict somebody. And it's, it's founded on the Holy Bible in 2013. That Bible is identified as the authorized version and only the authorized version. It's now commonly since 1881. It's called the Authorized King James Version or the AKJV or the KJV. <clears throat> now, they, Bob has warned us there's going to be a terrible false flag. That means they're going to blame somebody else for a terrible, terrible event. To get something after 12 November in Israel and probably after the 13th year, someone's going to strike both countries. A great conflict of forces against Israel, for sure, is seen coming and chaos to this country here. It's specifically choreographed to be concurrent so that we can't help Israel. 
Not that this president wants to assist him in any manner. In fact, he most certainly desires just the contrary. Now, this Obamacare thing has fallen apart. It's coming apart the seams, and they've got to have something to cover this thing in the news. Because <clears throat> Obamacare is set to destroy this country. It's, it's set to take the old people to their graves with no medical care and give whatever money, whatever care there is to the people who haven't worked a lick for it. Those who don't work won't eat, the Bible said. They won't work, they don't eat. And we have this thing set up to where the people in the middle are going to pay for it. And now the website's falling apart. It's not going to get put together. They're going to have to have a cover story in the press or something to, to get it out of, out of the picture, they've got to bring us into martial law. And they have to pass something to outlaw the guns. They were supposed to have, Bob said, we'll have trouble on the 13th and 17th of October, and we surely did. We almost defaulted on the debt, on, on the debt deal. And he says, 13th, 17th of November, watch out for that. Well, it's coming. Sister, Sister Elizabeth said that the Lord showed her between the seventh week after Sukkot, Tabernacles, 24 September, it will be 12th of November. Trouble will come. Brother Joe saw the same thing. He was going to come back from India through Israel, and the Lord said, no, trouble, trouble, trouble. Do not go through Israel in November. I, call, I called my contact in Israel today, and I warned him. I said, there's a, there's a, there's a target doing and every time they have one of these attacks or one of these incidents, there's always a drill going on. The Boston Massacre. There's a drill going on there. There was a drill going on there. So people started collapsing on the street and blood started running, and then they knew it wasn't a drill anymore. The subway in England, there was a drill. There was an Air Force drill on 911, September 11, 2001. <clears throat> All right. Now, they said in Israel, well, Al, uh, there's no war going to come to Israel in November. Now, then you can't use tanks then, and, you know, you can't use armor. Well, there wasn't any armor before 1914, and they had plenty of wars. Civil War, we had no armor, and we had the bloodiest war we've ever seen. I'll read this to you. No, the employment of modern armored or tracked vehicles in, a, in warfare is a product of the last hundred years, and it was never necessary prior to the 20th century to wage bloody wars. In other words, in a rainy season, you don't need tanks or panzers or wheels or track to launch a deadly attack. Just the contrary, the military commander or commanders with the most boots in the mud, it's raining, could hopefully overcome a small miracle force whose armored force multiplier as in Israel's tanks, would be negated due to wet or muddy field conditions. I said, listen, this is what happened over in, in the Battle of the Bulge. I said, I now and Bradley could not conceive that Germans could or would attack in any matter through the Adenis Forest on the 16th day of December of 1944. Fortunately, General George S. Patton, Jr., a student of military history, had ordered his executive officer, Codman, Colonel Codman, to have his entire staff prepare an op plan to wheel the entire Third Army minus the 20th Corps northward to Bastogne in case a German attacked. Therefore, Patton was prepared to turn the Third Army 90 degrees and leave Bastogne in case the Vermont attacked, and they did attack. Patton wheeled in less than 48 hours and 120 day, and miles in seven days he relieved the bulge, the most vicious battle American forces have ever fought. I, now I said, George, what can you do? He says, I'll be ready in 48 hours. And Bradley said, being able to realistic, Patton. He said, I'm being realistic. realistic. I've already drawn the, the op order up to go, and when I make the phone call, we swing. Patton got on his radio and radioed, we were 90 degrees to last home. He did. Now, I'm sure with this concurrent in Israel, this is what happened in 73. The Germans would not let us ship any tanks out of Europe, out of Germany, to back up the Israelis. 
in the 73 Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur War. They wouldn't let us, so we had to fly them. And they were fighting and fighting, and Golda Meir called Richard Nixon. And Richard Nixon had been told by his mother, Richard, one day you're going to be able to help the Jewish people, one day. And Kissinger had already said, let the Jews sweat a little bit. Just didn't let Israel sweat a little bit. Well, there's not much sweat to be had. It's a very small place, you know, in bigger New Jersey. He called Mr. Nixon at 3 a.m. in the morning, and he authorized the 171, 141s. He authorized the C-5As, and they hauled the stuff, refueling in the Azores and refueling in route, and they supplied Israel with the tanks. They landed those things in air airfields right close to the battle line. Israel was saved. There's going to come a prophesied false flag, which will dwarf the September 11th, 2001 scenario. And we know about this power grid exercise that FEMA's got going. And Brother Inca's got a call from uh, an individual who's been an ex, who worked for the uh, 911 uh, dispatch, you want know, a sheriff's department. Department of Homeland Security guys told him, man, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be trouble. You better prepare. You're going to prepare. This is a month after we had the news about the exercise of the power grid and it was in, in November 12th, the 13th, 14th. Only a prayer bought miracle can delay this catastrophe. And some things in my own personal life. Noah told me, the Lord spoke to me and said, Noah prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Household. Oh, and I can see this coming. I can see how this would come to pass. Hopefully there will be enough power left and whatever so I can tell you about it when it does happen. Now be advised that nothing of this scenario has come through the Holy Spirit to me personally. None of this came to me personally. I did not hear the Lord speak early in the morning. I heard I have correlated, I have correlated a data stream from all sources, and I can feel I can thus postulate the events ahead of time. And I'm doing it tonight on the 24th of November. A false flag means the entity which produced the disaster will escape all blame in the national and international press and TV news. And an entirely innocent party or entity will be framed and blamed so that the new world order can advance its pernicious agenda against the entire globe. September 11, 2001 was a false flag event. Now, I want to explain how I'll to let them make pulse to you. Because Glenn Beck last night evidently got on this. TV program that starts talking about EMP, electromagnetic pulse. Well, there's lots of things that are electromagnetic pulses. Uh, static electricity, jumping off of a car seat. That's a that's a magnetic that's electromagnetic pulse. They're very small. Lightning is electromagnetic pulse. Okay. What we're talking about is when a missile is fired into the air from a submarine, stay off the coast, it takes eight minutes for that missile to go up and for the nuclear detonation, the new death, to explode. And it sends millions and billions, quadrillions of electrons towards the Earth at the speed of light, near the speed of light. And they fall upon all the transistors and the semiconductors and the uh, diodes in your watch or in your car's computer or in your microwave computer or in the electric electrical generating plants around the world are all wired up. All the radios and stuff will now have transistors in them and they'll bust, they'll pop. <clears throat> now, Beck got on there and starts cueing the American people in. For some reason, he's up and talking about electromagnetic pulse. So it would appear they're going to take the grid out, power grid out, and say it was an electromagnetic pulse from Russia or someplace, or who knows where it's from. But it's been seen 
These males saw the vision of a missile exploding up in the air. It takes eight minutes. You can't defend against it. And Beck was talking EMP. It's really called hemp. High-altitude electromagnetic pulse. It's done by a nuclear bomb. And you can't really test the shielding from a, from a, from a test bed point because we can't put any bombs off in the sky anymore, up in the stratosphere, or up in the ionosphere, wherever. We've got a treaty against that. So we've been able to, we've only been able to simulate where we can shield stuff or not. We don't know if the shielding will actually work, but we think it will. Military equipment's shielded. But your stuff's not shielded. Not shielded. And if you get a burst in the sky, now, Peter's Mountain is located about 20 miles from here. Peter's Mountain is about 34 of those bases. And I noticed, and it was set up in the, uh, we also have uh, wildlife management areas are being set up for foreign facilities, clandestine healer pads, right here in this, in this county. And I went, I went down in uh, Campbell County, I think it was White Oak Mountain Wildlife Management Area, and they got a big new sign down here, so evidently they got the same thing down there in that county. And they got one up north, the Culpeper. I can't remember what the name of it is. It's a man's name, Wildlife Management Area, and they got brand new big signs up, and they got something going on. What they've done is they put facilities over there. I looked over on the mountain today, and I see this huge tower over there. I hadn't seen it before. I got to take a look at it because I got to figure which mountain it's on because I can see it with my naked eye, but it's some big facility sticking up, and nobody said a word about it, and it's in this county. Peter's Mountain is 1,820 feet up on top of a fair sized hill, okay? And there's foreign troops up there. We know they're up there. They've, they've run several people off. Mountain. We went up that no trespassing sign. What you doing? Get out of here. They're up there. They haul the garbage and stuff from one by about about forty five miles away, or maybe more than that, about forty five miles away, they don't get a local guy. They haul the sewage from Richmond uh, sewage truck. So nobody local knows what's going on. But the concrete you had to mix locally, and they mixed it in 2008, and they poured 210 feet deep up there. And two years later, we find out, uh-oh, they lowered a missile into that mountain up there. Now, our defense posture looks for missiles incoming from outside our borders. I know it's not a one of our missiles because they've got foreign troops up there guarding, guarding that place. And they have semi-automatic and fully automatic weapons and black uniforms. So they could actually very easily shoot that, get an EMP burst up there and blame Iran. They could send that missile up in the sky over D.C. and it goes off, puts out this whole area, the whole mid-Atlantic area would be out of power depending on the altitude and the power of the burst, okay? The yield of the blast. And they could put us out of commission. And they would blame it on the Russians. They'd blame it on the Iranians. They could blame it on anybody they wanted to, and they did it from right here. The missile silos back in 97 were commanded by foreigners out in F.E. Warren Air Force Base missile field. Foreigners are running around the NSA headquarters, spying on everybody in uniform. They're in uniform spying on us up there. My buddy saw them. Back in the late 90s, he saw them up there. Peter's Mountain is an evil place because that's where they flew and went after the sheriff of Orange County after he, after he badmouthed the United Nations on the uh, radio, Okay. Anyhow, I'm just checking my signal level here. Joe said that the Lord woke him the other night, and he just come back from Michigan, and the Spirit of God spoke. It said catastrophe and 
there is destruction will come to the United States very soon. Now, on Tuesday night, I mentioned Brother Yost Miller. He came here. He came here. He was a Mennonite pastor. He came to the Mennonite church. And this county's got a lot of Mennonite folks. And they have several churches, uh, at least three or four churches in a two-county area, two or three-county area. And he spoke about the New World Order. And I said, you guys have heard the theology this morning of the New World Order. In fact, the guy who introduced Brother Miller said, you know, some fella told one of three of the sisters down at uh, the other church, down at the store at Walmart or wherever it was, that they're going to be the first ones picked up when they come to get them because they wear those coverings. I asked the guy at the landfill, I said, were you here in 94 when you had a smell of preach back 19 years ago? Yeah, I must have been there. He preached on a new world order. I showed the guys the pictures. I first heard of the new world order and the Antichrist mentioned on the 16th of July of 1987. Seven years later, I hear it mentioned again at the Mennonite Church, and I had some pictures of it. You guys want to see the pictures of what he's talking about? He gave you the theology. The Assyrian is coming, and I want to show you the manifestation right here in the United States, and I shared them. The choppers had thundered over my house that Early in the morning, early in the morning, about nine o'clock in the morning, thundered over my house, and I saw they were unmarked. The Lord said, "Look in your Bible in the morning." And I looked. We've heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador sent the land of the heathen. Let us rise up against her in battle. Uh oh, that's who they were. And so I said, "Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Try to save the church from a new world order." And then I had to try to save the Jews. They won't listen. The rabbis won't listen. You know, I've talked about this story uh, once again. Elie Wiesel was about 15 years old, 16, 15 years old in Auschwitz. His father told him when he started to say, how old are you? He said, tell him you're 16. So he told him he's 16. He's only about 14. He's a good-sized kid. <clears throat> and he went to the left, and those who went to the right went to the gas chamber. Well, he was... Him and his father went to the left, the selection process. And he escaped from Auschwitz, and he wrote a book called Night. And he, he wrote some other books, too. He teaches at Boston College. He's about 85 years old now, or maybe a little less, maybe 80, 85 or 83, maybe. And then to get hungry where... L.A. Wiesel lived was a guy named Moses the Beetle. Moses the Beetle. A Beetle is a town crier. He runs down and says everything's okay. And the Germans, the Nazis came in in March of 44. They didn't get there to 44 for the Jews in Hungary. And they literally said, all the Jews that aren't born in to get hungry, get on the train. If you weren't born, you got to get on the train. You're leaving. They do it incrementally, little by little by little, just like the New World Order is doing it now, little by little by little. One little terror story after another. Train went out of town about 20 miles. They got them all off a train. and machine gunned the whole train load. Mosey got back and didn't get hit by the bullets. He came back and told the rabbis, they say machine gunned the train. Mosey, you must be mad. The Germans don't do that. The Germans don't do that. Well, we've heard rumors about the other countries where the Germans have been. Yeah, they would. They did it. Or you might say, well, the Americans, they won't do that. Henry Kissinger did not want to send any tanks to Israel to save Israel. He was a Jew. He's one of the Illuminati, man. He's one of them. American Nixon saved Israel through God's hand. God used Nixon to save Israel and said, be free. And now they want us not to be able to help Israel when this thing goes down over there, so they're going to try to put us out of out of commission over here. This is what they're doing. I'm positive of it. They realize that Nixon 
The Germans wouldn't let them ship any tanks, but Nixon shipped the tanks and the guns and the weapons and the ammunition. How they got the stuff equipped and going so fast is another story, but they did. And uh, But this time, they're, gonna, they're not going to risk that. We've got to stop the United States from taking any part. Even though we've got a president who's going to go against Israel, who's already gone against Israel, we're going to have to make sure America doesn't help them. So the way to do that is to cause a catastrophe over here. And I'm telling you, Brother Bob saw us, Mr. Mr. Obama's walking a spider-thin line. A spider-thin line he's walking on. Okay, let me look at the... Talking about Peter's Mountain. They can shoot that that missile off up there. They shoot that missile off. Our guys are looking for missiles from Iran, if our stuff is even operational anymore. Okay? They're looking for a missile from... They, they, they have discounted in the press Russia. Russia's got as many missiles as she's ever had. The Russians never dismantle a system. They keep it greased in oil and ready to roll. So, they're looking for a way to stop the United States from helping Israel. Satan wants the Temple Mount. He wants the Temple Mount for his age of Aquarius, his thousand years, and he's going to get it any way he can get it. Oh, yeah, he'll get it for a couple, three years. And we'll all suffer between now and then. Well, I'm going to be raptured. Oh, come on. Let's, let's, okay, we'll go through this one more time. There's no, the word rapture isn't even found in my Bible. The Lord's coming is found as sure as I'm sitting here talking on this phone. The Lord is coming back. He shall return. But the Bible says a bunch, bunch of people are going to be beheaded. But you know, the other get teams are here. I was out in Lubbock, Texas, or was it? Uh, get to the Lubbock and uh, Midland, between Lubbock and Odessa. And the MC called me over and said, you see the lady sitting right there? She doesn't want her two daughters to hear this, so she told me to tell you. Her brother is a stevedore on the beach, on the long, in Long Beach and also at, uh, at Oakland near San Francisco. They dropped a box from China the other day, and it had a case of and it was full of guillotines. And that's the second or third report I'd heard, but now I know the lady whose brother saw him. They're going to cut people's heads off. The Romans crucified later on in the Middle Ages, they beheaded people. And so it's going to happen again. Satan doesn't change, he's as evil as he ever was. But now we have prophets of God who can send warnings and more warnings and more warnings. And as Moshe was telling the rabbis, they machine gun the train, rabbi, rabbi, Moshe, you're mad, man. When old Al goes down and tells some of the people in town, Al, you're crazy, man. That, <laughs> we don't do this kind of thing in the United States. No, we don't. At least not until the last few years. And there are Americans who will do that. And they're not only counting on a few Americans to help out, they they're counting on a whole bunch of foreigners to do it. They killed Carol Ann Goodbaum out in uh, the Phoenix Harbor Airport, Sky Harbor Airport in two thousand seven. She was a Jewish from South Africa, and she was complaining about them holding her up, missing her flight, and she's going to miss her flight, and she started hollering. And they, Americans, hauled her down through in a clink. You have no constitutional rights anymore at the airport. You don't have many more right in your own house, to tell you the truth. They took her down to the cell and tied her up, had her handcuffed, and the next thing you know, she's screaming down there. And when Americans went down, and she wasn't responsive. Well, that means she was dead. They hung her up by her hands and twisted her hands around over her head and pulled them under her chin, choked her to death. 
That's why he was. That's why he was yelling. So I'm sorry, and Andy Hill tried to explain it. He did a really poor job. Like one fellow wrote from Cornville, Arizona. He says, "There's cameras down there, man. Somebody knows what happened to that woman." And he says, "Until we find out, this is a dangerous place to live. This country." I've got that on my website. If you ever want to copy of that, you write me at Al Cuppet, you know, Postmaster Wolftown, Virginia, and I will send you I'll send you a copy of how she died and what happened down there. Two pages. It happened. The Holocaust started for Carol Ann Goatbaum in October of two thousand seven. But they say, I'm nuts. I'm not nuts. When I see somebody murder a woman in a prison cell, with Americans not more than 100 feet or 200 feet away, I hit the Phoenix back in 98, and they said, Alice, there's, there's 12 Russian cops on the Phoenix police force. And we don't like them, but there's nothing we can do about it. Well, there's six hiring programs now that have hired these foreign cops. I got to write up on that, too. And I posted that on the website, com, And Bruce posted it, and Shannon posted it on the website. It's been four years, folks. I've been on this program for four years. I've been one of the Mennonite Church for 19 years in this county. And all they do is sit over there and sell eggs and Kunzler ham. They sell brownies and cakes and all kinds of oatmeal and wheat flour and all that good stuff. And their dear old Yost Miller has gone on to be with Jesus, man. But he met a fellow named Lester, and he said, Lester, this guy, I don't know, he's been sending me this stuff, and man, it's kind of, it's kind of shaky. It's kind of making me shaky. And, and Lester says, well, you preached on a, you preached on the theology at that church, remember? Yeah. Well, I've been talking to Al for about a year now, and he showed me the, he showed me the fulfillment of what you preached in November of 1994. It's coming to pass. And uh, they did take my advice and get a generator over there. I told him, you know, the lights are going to go out. And I'm talking about an EMP attack back in 94, I told him. So he bought a 20 kW generator, three-point hitch on his tractor. After about three years, nothing happened now. You must be a false prophet. I said, wait a minute, man. Time's on my side. Next year, he lost his power for 40-some hours. And his ice cream didn't melt. His milk didn't spoil. His meat didn't rot. He's selling stuff. So you know what? I'm going to get me a big generator. He got a bigger one. But the one I was talking about, I was talking about in 95, I was talking about EMP, and now it looks like it's coming. And we just happened to learn when grub, when grub contractors lowered that, missile to that silo, we found out there were a crane company from Rising Sun, Maryland. They put that missile in that silo. We're not looking for a missile Behind us, we're looking for a missile out in front of our borders, not coming out of the middle of our country. I've got a video of a Russian ICBM being taken into the west gate of Yellowstone National Park. They got one in there, too. But that place is going to blow up one day. That that place is a seismic area, and it's got a lot of magma under the ground, and it's starting to get hot out there, and it's getting ready to blow its gasket. Well, in my answer to my letter, uh, my lawyer friend Jack, he wrote this story. He's not a very believer, but he wrote this. He said, the master of the universe is talking about God is implementing a final redemption, my friends. The redemption. The nations of the world have to collapse before they can crush us here in Israel. And we plainly see that the world order is headed towards a collapse. 
No one is discussing what will happen when America defaults on the interest payments to the international banks. No, I say when America defaults, not if. The only ways out of the debt crisis are either, one, default and collapse of the global system, or two, radical increase in productivity. That would mean severely cutting back on the size and role of government in order to release manpower and resources to the productive sector. Obama's doing just the opposite. Taking manpower and resources, he's taking that from the productive sector and diverting it to the government. He parties were right to prefer the collapse of the, of the shutdown and the, of the government, the collapse and shutdown of the government, and the collapse of the economy, not now rather than later, but they would also have given Obama the ability to blame it on them. They cannot win a game of chicken with Obama because he is not afraid of crashing in the USA. Exactly right, Jack. Exactly right. That's what he was hired to do. This is his goal, and he really doesn't care how it comes about. Being able to blame it on the right on the right wing is just a plus for him. You see, they always blame it on somebody else. That's what happened in 911, September 2001. So if default is inevitable, every time they decline to bite the bullet, every time they kick the can down the road, the collapse gets bigger because the debt gets bigger. Increasing the debt means increasing the interest payments, which can be covered in one of only two ways either cutting back the government budget and freeing money to the productive sector or raising taxes. That's what they're going to do. They're going to raise taxes. Raising taxes will shrink the productive sector, which will reduce taxable income, which will increase the deficit, forcing the government and Congress to raise the debt ceiling and thus increase interest payments. Eventually, the U.S. will default. What will it mean? Well, for one thing, it will mean the end of U.S. dollar as the world's currency reserve currency. That will mean that America cannot buy with its own paper, but only with production, which has been massively burdened by overregulation at home and extensively outsourced abroad. We don't have any production. Most of it's overseas now. That means everything will suddenly be much, much more expensive for Americans. Right. That will happen. You only notice the loss of the dollar sharply when you go overseas. And realize that's dropped like an Israel four shekels to a dollar to three point five shekels to a dollar now. But it's gonna come here a little slower, but you'll eventually when the prices go up you'll see it. That impact will catastroph will this will impact catastrophically on the weakest sectors as socialism always ends up doing. And these weak sectors will be desperate. The Obama administration is prepared for that. Of course, it has bought up tens of thousands of assault rifles, billions of rounds of ammo, literally billions, thousands of armored cars for use by domestic agencies. He mentions all of them. And he has a pure pocket comatitis, which used to prohibit U.S. military, prohibited from being deployed within the territory of the U.S. Now, he's not mentioning the foreign troops because he's in Israel. He hasn't been able to see the foreign troops here, like I have, and the foreign cops. This was part of Obamacare in order to make your medical care more affordable, you see. <laughs> yeah. And if FEMA has relocation camps ready, has millions of problematic people, so they can as hosts to millions of problematic people. The Obama folks have prepared to protect themselves from you. There has been no preparation whatsoever to protect you from the catastrophic results of economic collapse and social chaos. Well, FEMA's told us to have three days or a week of food, okay? America's already partially folded, by the way. That's already happening. Social Security has canceled the inflation of the two payments, meaning that our government, meaning that our retirement and disability benefits, which we and our employers have paid for all that we have paid to us all our working lives, have been are being diminished month by month. That's true. It goes for interest same goes for interest payments on the debt to the mega banks and other creditors, like the China and the, and the oil sheets. You're right about Obama not wanting to uh, help Israel attack Iran. You're right about him doing the exact opposite. And the European nations would join in enthusiastically, as would the Arab countries, including the implacable enemies of the Iranian mullahs. The UN, meaning the nations of the world, 
but also fully and enthusiastically endorsed and authorized the use of sanctions and even collect the military action against Israel. And that's what the Bible says is going to happen, folks. They're going to come against Israel. And that is why they will collapse, especially the U.S. Being, because the U.S. is still a power center. My heart weeps for America, but copious warning has been given, as Jonathan Cullen, for one noticed in the Harbinger, if you haven't seen that video of the Harbinger, H-E-R-B-I-N-G-E-R, which was widely publicized. I Jack saw that thing, and Cullen, Cullen is a Messianic rabbi. And Jack watched it. Others have noted that disasters have occurred at times and in ways that link them with hostile U.S. governments and hostile U.S. government acts against Israel. These warnings have been denounced as disloyal to America. See, now, let's read that again. Others have noticed that disasters have occurred at times in ways that link them with hostile U.S. government attacks against Israel. That's right. Things happen when when we go against Israel. Bad things happen in the United States. Those warnings have been denounced as disloyal to America, these warnings that we give out. You better not mess over Israel, or you're going to get in trouble. Well, this is called disloyalty. It's called religious obscurantism. I never heard the word obscurantism, but uh, religious uh, obfuscation, I guess. And just plain madness, they call us mad. They call me mad for saying these things, okay? In the end, they've been ignored. America has made a decision, even if only passively, in ignoring the warnings and accepting the results of a stolen election. And he's talking about the last election, 2012, when it was stolen by Obama and his crew. I have very faith in the Lord God of Israel that he'll bring about the collapse of the nations before they would crush Israel. The Bible says it. As one third of Israel shall be saved, and the rest of it is going to have problems. Two thirds is going to have real serious problems. But one third, 33% is better than 13%, because all we're going to save here is 13%. And Israel is going to save, God's going to save 33%. That's how I look at it. Well, folks, we won't have a program next week. And I might ask the producer in the future here to switch back to Wednesday night, maybe. Uh, but we'll, the Lord willing, we'll see you two weeks from now. And uh, if you need to write me, I'm, I'm trying to not scare you to death. But if you get out, of bed, get out of bed and pray in the morning and read your King James Bible, and pray and seek the Lord's face, and pray and pray and pray some more. And you won't be fearful because faith drives out all the fear. Okay? Faith is the opposite of fear. And the Bible tells us that love chases all fear away. The only way you can have true love is to have pure faith. Pure faith comes from the pure word of God. With a perverted Bible, you're going to be scared as a chicken, you know, when the sky is falling. These perverted Bibles, there's no faith in these perverted Bibles. Stop using them. Get back to the King James Bible. Thirty pastors over in India got together with 30 New Testaments. I sent back to 30 pastors over there, and they preached out of the King James New Testament. And about three months after they started doing that preaching, they had a big revival, and a lady was raised from the dead. She was raised from stone-cold dead. She was raised in the dead in Manipur, India. Get the right Bible. Sing the right songs. Leave these spiritual cesspits that are called churches. Okay? Get your house church. Meet together with folks. Start off with a prayer meeting and Bible study or whatever. Seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Read Acts. Read Acts. Read the Gospels and read Acts. You've got to read the four Gospels and you've got to read Acts. If you read the four Gospels, if you read the four Gospels and read Acts, and then read 
then read uh, Corinthians and read Hebrews and read them slowly, you'll grasp all this from the King James Bible. You'll see it all. You'll be able to understand it. You'll be able to understand it. The Spirit of God will speak to you. He said to my great uncle, my great uncle didn't go to Bible school. He started seven churches in the mountains of Maryland. And he did it like the, he did it like the Bible said, and he got the thing down right. And I learned. My mother and father learned. And I saw it. We had a great big, big deal going between 1906 and 1957 or 8. And in the 60s, things started going apart. They took prayer out of schools, took the Bible out of schools. Then in 1972, they let abortion, they uh, turned abortion loose on the country. We lost the power. Perverted Bibles came in in 71, and we've lost the power for the past 40-some years. That's where we are. And when the power is lost in the spirit realm, Satan comes in with his forces, and they're here. Well, I'm going to close here. If you want to reach me, you reach me at Al Cup at Care Postmaster, Wolftown, Virginia, 22748. There is a special letter. I've got a note coming back to you. Matt, we got your letter, and the note's coming back to you. And uh, that's the saddlebag's going out, too. Anyhow, thank you, Lord, for your blessings. I ask you to bless the producer, bless the audience, O oh Lord, be with them. Lord, turn their fear into faith. If they have fear, may it be turned into pure faith. Let them read your word and study the word and pray early in the morning, Lord, they might hear you speak early in the morning a.m. hours, that you might hear the Spirit of God speak to a still small voice and give us consolation and give us peace and walk with us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. Now, folks, we'll, the Lord willing, we'll see you in November on this November broadcast. 7th. November 7th. November 7th, right. November 7th, right. To the next election here. Pray for E.W. Jackson. We need to see him elected. We need this man. We need this man. It's looking tough, but uh, the Lord knows best. Okay, folks, see you next week or two weeks from now on November the 7th. Bye-bye. So long, Thank you so very much, Al. Ladies and gentlemen, Al Cuppet on Freedom Fighters for America World Radio. We want to thank you for tuning into this broadcast, and Al will be back on November 7th. Uh, it is October 24th, 2013. Thanks for tuning in, and God bless you all. Stay safe, and we shall be back on the air. Take care. Coffee. Coffee now! Ah!